Okay, so as you can see here, we have a registration form and when data is inserted into this form and submitted, as long as the data is correct, we're going to have a user inserted in our database and they're going to have a hashed password as a result, which is going to be much more secure than using a plain text password as we were doing within the beginning of the course. So what is the next step? You can see over here in our node authentication process, we hashed our user's password, which you can X off now, and we're storing it in the database. So really what it comes down to is now we need to actually log our user in using a few NPM modules, one of them called Passport and one of them is going to be called Express Session. And there's actually a few more that are going to go into this, but the main ones you need to know are going to be called Express Session and Passport.js. So what happens after a user inserts all this information correctly and it gets stored in the database? Well, what we need to do after that is we need a way to log our user in. And what does that actually mean? Well, when we log a user into our app, what's going to happen is we're going to be creating what's known as a session. So you can think of a session as non-permanent data storage. Basically what's going to happen is once we implement sessions within our app, our app is going to create a place in which we can store data inside of it. So what that means is you see, I have Nodemon running in the terminal right now. If we go ahead and start storing data with sessions within our app, as soon as we quit out of Nodemon like so, all that session data is going to be gone. Like I said, it's non-permanent data unless we implement something called session storage, which we will be doing later on. But essentially once a user registers with this form right here and clicks submit, our app is going to be creating a session on our backend and we're going to be returning to the user what's known as an authentication cookie. So you'll see over here, we have a location for cookies. We're going to be creating a cookie for the user and this is going to act as basically an ID. It's going to act as a key to our session over here. And the session is storing data pertaining to our user. Specifically, it's going to be storing a user ID. And once we have a combination of an authentication cookie and a storage in our user's backend, well, that basically allows the user to access any other information pertaining to their account. So it can be things such as their username, their email, any other sensitive data that's supposed to be specific to them. The combination of the session and the authentication cookie is what's going to be allowing the user to access that sensitive information. So that's a lot to take in right now. And if you're confused, I don't blame you. It took me a lot of time to learn this and really get it ingrained in my head. But as we go about developing this, it's going to be more and more clear what's really going on behind the scenes here. So we know that we need to log our user in by creating a session on the back end and giving our user an authentication cookie. And we're going to be doing this using a few NPM packages. But before we go about doing this, let's go ahead and create a few extra pages that we're going to be using later on. So we're going to be bouncing between pages and redirects since when a user clicks submit, well, they're usually going to be taken to a profile page or a home page or something along the lines of that. So to get these pages created, the first thing I'm going to do is open up a new Chrome window. I'm going to search for bootstrap for like so. And then I'm going to click on the first result and then head on over to the example section. And basically this is going to provide us with the HTML and CSS that we need to get started with a nice looking template really quickly using Bootstrap, of course. So if you scroll on down and click narrow jumbotron, this is going to be the best looking layout for what we're doing. We're just going to go ahead and right click on the page and click view page source. This is going to give us all the HTML associated with the page. And all we need to do is copy all of this by pressing command A to select it and then command C to copy it. And once we have this, we can go ahead and get this out of the way and create a new view within our views directory called home.hbs. And this is going to represent our home page. So we're going to paste all that HTML in here. We can get rid of the script tag since we don't really need any scripts for this page at the moment, at least. And we're going to scroll on up to the top where you're going to see a section for the nav menu. We're going to go ahead and take this right here, just copy it all, cut it on out of there. And we're going to delete all this header section right here since we already have a header section set up within this partials directory. So with that nav menu that we just cut out, we're going to paste it within our header because we want to make sure that our header is being displayed, this nav menu. We want to make sure that it's being displayed across all of our pages rather than just the home page, which we just created. So that's the whole reason of putting this within the header section so we can reference it across multiple views rather than just one. And once we have this in place, let's go ahead and save our home file. And then we need to make sure that we're referencing our new header file. So we're going to go to register and our handlebars and copy our reference right here and paste it within our home.handlebars file. 
So once we do this and actually visit our home page, our index, we're not going to see anything as of yet. And that's because we need to actually register this route. We need to tell our app what happens when a user actually visits the root of our site, which we're not doing at the moment. So in order to tell our app what it should do when it visits the root of our site, we're going to say router.get. When a user requests the root of our site, then call the following function with a request and response object. And inside of this function, we're just going to copy this line of code right here paste it up top, I'm going to format everything really quickly. And then rather than rendering the register page, we're going to be rendering the home view, which we just created. So this is just referencing this right here within the views directory. And we'll give this a title of home rather than register. So now if we refresh the page, you're going to see that we're getting exactly what we want. We have our header, we have also all the, all the Jumbotron heading stuff associated with that bootstrap file, which is perfect. So we have a page for our home page, but we don't really have an about page. We don't have a contact page. And we don't really want an about or contact page for this as of yet, at least. So rather than reference an about and contact page, we're going to be referencing a registration page, which is going to reference the registration page we've been working on earlier. So let's see, register. And this is going to have an href, a link to our register route, like so. And rather than a contact page, we are going to be creating a profile page. So this is going to represent data specific to a particular user, and this is going to be restricted. So basically when a user tries to visit this without logging in, we're going to redirect them to the home page instead, or maybe even a login page. So I guess we'll add one more page in here. Let's go ahead and first finish up our profile. We'll say this has an href of profile. And then let's add one more page in here for safekeeping so that when a user is already registered and they want to log in again, they have a login form to reference rather than having to go through the whole registration process over again. So this is going to reference a login page. It's going to have a title of login. And if we refresh it over here, we're not going to see anything as of yet. And that's because each time we make a change to this header.handlebars file, we need to make sure that we're restarting Nonemon manually. So we're going to head on over to Nonemon and restart Nonemon like so. And now since we've done that, if we refresh our page, you'll see that now we have four links rather than just three. We have one for register, profile, and login. So let's go ahead and visit each of these and see what happens. If we click login, we're going to get 404 not found. If we click, get out of your browser sync. If we click profile, we're going to get 404 not found. And then when we click register, well, we have a registration page, so at least that is working. And you'll see home is highlighted for each of these. Let's go ahead and get rid of the active class for the time being. And remember, each time we make a change to one of these files, Nodemon has to come back into play, manual restart. So now if we restart Nodemon, nothing is going to be highlighted, which is decent for the time being. So we have a few of our pages ready to go. We have a home page, we have a register page, we have a profile link and we have a login link which aren't referencing any routes or views at the moment but this should be good for the time being we can go ahead and create the rest of the views as we need them later on for now we'll just go ahead and redirect the user to the home page as soon as they log in